So I bought the cheapest coyote powered Mustang I could find at my local auction. And when it showed up, I thought I got a super bargain. Sure, it looks a bit rough around the edges. When I first got it fired up, that super sweet coyote sounded super smooth with no major issues. Cranks right over. The engine in this car is solid and I couldn't even find any leaks anywhere, but it was on the first drive, I figured out why this car was sold so cheap. I'm gonna skip fourth, let me show you what happens when I go to fifth. You hear that? We don't have a fifth gear. Now if you want to learn more about the buying process of this Mustang, including what I saw in the auction listing, its final bid price, and an in-depth look at the condition, go ahead and pause this video and check out the previous one above. Obviously, I'm all about a deal and I like to solve my issues on a budget. The main problem is in this market, a major component like a transmission isn't cheap. And if I want to actually finish this project, I might have to bite the bullet on this one and paying for the fix wasn't really the hard part. It was the installation of the thing on jack stands that had us a bit stuck. Dude, you gotta tell the people. This is awful. No, tell them to hit the like button. <laughs> yeah. Early, there's only three viable solutions to fixing our busted manual transmission. The one solution that you guys overwhelmingly recommended in the comments of the last video was to rebuild this transmission right here. From the factory, Ford puts a bunch of little plastic components in here. The aftermarket has fixed this with metal components, but it is these plastic components that disintegrate over time and cause issues like we've got here. The inability to get into gears or grinding when going into gears. Now, depending on how broken this transmission is to buy a rebuild kit for it. It's going to start at probably three to four hundred dollars and make its way up to well over a thousand dollars depending on how many components we just want to replace. But to figure all that out we've got to actually crack this case open which requires some really specialty tools like some really long jaw pullers stuff that I just don't have. And on top of all this by the time we open it up figure out what's wrong uh, this could lead to a great time constraint, especially since I want to get this video out to you, which leads us to our second solution, the quickest solution, go grab a gearbox out of the junkyard and just slap it in the car. But obviously this isn't the smartest solution. Because of the documented issues with this transmission, we can expect that our replacement transmission will have issues in due time. On top of that, every single junkyard transmission I found costs more than a remanufactured transmission, which is our third option, the option I went with. I paid $2,000 for a remanufactured transmission from a company that does it regularly. It comes with a warranty and they took all the plastic components out of it and replaced them all with metal ones. So the fact that I didn't have to pack this up, ship it out somewhere, which is a huge hassle in itself, cost about two to three hundred dollars. And I got my remanufactured transmission within about a week of ordering it. Well, everything just made sense. And it sounded much better than the fifth gear grind that came in this transmission which obviously sounds really bad, but let's take a second and put things in reverse, which actually still works in this transmission. Let me tell you about something that sounds really good. I went and cop a new used range. Got that noise kind of strange. Sound like time of chains be rattling. I be strong like Brutus, pour that straight, straight. Lucas next, own a be a doofus when it blow up. Whether I'm grinding my morning coffee or grinding the gears in the Mustang, my Raycon earbuds get me through the daily grind with their eight hours of playtime. And this little storage case has a built-in battery that recharges the buds so you'll get up to 32 hours of juice without having to lug around any extra wires. They come with a selection of optimized gel tips, which assures you'll have a perfect and comfortable fit. Even though they might look small, they pack huge sound. If you're like me and enjoy your hip hop, you're gonna love that little bit of extra bass you get out of your Raycons. And no matter what you're doing, whether you're working on a car or taking a run, you can shake away all day long. They never fall out of place. Quite possibly the best part is that a set of Raycon earbuds costs about half that of other boutique brands out on the market. And right now, when you visit buyraycon.com slash samcrack or click the link in the description, you're gonna get an additional 15% off your order. I gotta give a huge thanks to Raycon for making these an incredible everyday companion and for also sponsoring this video.
Here's a quick look at the clutch that came out of the Mustang. This is a factory Ford clutch and you can see it is really worn. We're down to the rivets and a lot of the lining areas here. It's a good time to obviously replace this and as you can hear when I jiggle it the springs are loose which is mean this has been used for a long time. A fresh clutch will have nice tight springs with absolutely no play in them. Now what these springs are responsible for is dampening all the vibrations that come out of the driveline when you engage and disengage the clutch. But either way, we're going to refresh this with something new and upgraded. Sage, how many rear main seals have we done? Two too many. Two too many. I think we've done four or five on the channel. I've screwed up three or four of those. <laughs> this one, we're going to do perfect because it's a Mustang. And you don't mess up Mustangs. They're too easy. This is a seal pick. This should make the removal pretty seamless. I say that. Let's see. Oh, no. Oh. It's pushing the seal inward. I already screwed up, Sage. How did I screw up that early into the rear main seal? Sage, I thought that we took the oil out of this. You know, I thought the same thing. No, you know, we didn't take the oil. What we did is we pulled the oil filter off to get to the headers. <laughs> okay, yeah. So some oil came out of it. That rear main's been on a long time because there's there's almost like a film of oil or something like it's it's got like a, a lip on the crank here. Now that this is off, we got a little bit more work to do. The good thing is we'll reseal our housing here with some RTV, so that'll be fresh. This has probably never been done before. And I'm I'm gonna go with I think that was the original rear main. So we determined that it's gonna be a whole lot easier. Do I look like an idiot? I'm wearing flip flops and No, you just look like a chillin'. So we determined it's much easier to get the seal in the housing and then slip it over the crank. You can slip it over the crank with little or no issue. It's that it sits really, really tight in this housing. And if I can't get it uniform in here, well, we're gonna have a problem. We're gonna have to pull the housing back off again. I'm gonna use the old seal right here and hit kind of some of the areas. And this is kind of just like a test run. This is gonna let us see how this should work, but see, I'd be afraid to do this in the car because one wrong tap, it's going to go way in too far. So look, this is actually pretty perfect. See how flush this is? This is pretty flush. It's actually coming along all right. This side's up a little bit, so we're going to tap right here just a smidgen. Wow, man, this is tight, but it's going. I've done a lot of transmissions and clutch jobs lately, so I've been able to learn and experience what different clutches feel like. So for the Coyote, I opted for a street performance clutch by Hayes. Now this is going to have an organic material on it, like 98% of all factory clutches out there. That allows for really smooth engagement. The car is going to feel like stock, but the upgraded pressure plate that comes with this kit is going to handle the increase in horsepower from our bolt-on mods quite a bit better than if you just ordered a stock one. All right, cool. Alignment tool to the clutch. And there we go. All right. And before we swap our freshly rebuilt transmission over to the car, we've got to take some of the sensors and parts off of our original transmission. Sage already went ahead and removed the factory shifter assembly here. Now this is a major, major area of complaint from a lot of Mustang owners. And if you look at it, you can see the bushings are like really soft from the factory. A lot of mushy parts here designed more for comfort than they are for sport. In the shifter in these GT Mustangs, it is really, really mushy. It feels nothing like the Shelby's, which use a completely different transmission. So what a lot of people like to do is upgrade the shifter assemblies. That helps with the shifts and it just really firms things up. That's why we're going with this right here. There's a Hearst competition style shifter. It's all solid metal metal and it comes with a much stiffer bushing which is going to really just make the shifts feel much more direct and much more crisp comparatively to the factory unit and since this is out of the car it makes the install so much simpler you know a lot of people install these while the transmission's still in the car so you got to get underneath and remove things from the bottom 
almost like pulling the transmission out. So with this out of the car, it will make the install breeze and make our transmission feel a ton better. You know what would make this easier? What? A lift. Yeah, yeah, I know that, but we don't got a lift right now, so we're gonna have to deal with what we got, Sage. Uh, oh, okay, I'm doing pretty good. Close, huh? Close. Oh, oh, oh. This is awful. No, tell him to hit the like button. <laughs> yeah. Because of all this hard work, this is pretty fun. Are you lifting your uh, side up? No, <laughs> go, one, two, three, go. Hard work? Yeah. So far, we, we're not even at the hard part here, Sage. Oh, oh Sage. money. Yeah. Well, what did I tell you about that wood, Sage? And taking this transmission out was one thing, but getting the other one back in is another. Sage and I were under there for like, I don't know, an hour, wiggling it one way, another way, and it's like there's not enough clearance, so Mike came over to help me. Mike, what are you thinking it looks like down there? You think we're going to be able to get it in easier? Or? It's done. What do you mean it's done? The transmission's in. It's, it's actually mated to the... Yeah, oh. I'm running the bolts down now. Whoa, Mike, 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 Mike. Whoa, 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 what are you doing? I'm just tightening this bolt. It was easy. What are you what, talking about? You did this by yourself. Yeah, you just gotta, you know, use your body. How about the jack? You use the jack. Yeah, I use the jack. I use my knee. I use my arms. You just push. Push in. Hold on. Is it actually... It's, it is made it. You were here for 10 minutes? Yeah, about maybe All right. 30 minutes. 30 bucks an hour. Is this, uh, uh, this good right here? That works, yeah. All right, dude. All right. Take care. See, See you soon, later. man. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it yeah. Thanks again. I can't believe how effortlessly Mike did this. He really saved the day here. And he did get this made up in literally just a few minutes. He relied heavily on the jack, which was obviously good because it didn't put any stress on him. And he told me to just kind of support and wiggle the bell housing while he angled the back of the, the transmission. And it slid into place. We got a couple bolts in right now, but we do have it still resting on the jack. And that's because, well, we had the transmission out. We removed our exhaust manifolds to prepare to install some long tube headers. This is really turning into the while you're in there job because any Anything that looks old or worn out we're kind of replacing we're also going to replace this this is a bit beat up this is our uh, AC condenser Mike came over with his uh, vacuum in here he took all the Freon out of here so this car is going to have a lot of new components on it now we're leaving the transmission here on the jack because we got the engine lowered a bit right now which will make it much easier for us to fit in our long tube headers once those are all secured we'll be able to push the transmission back up in place we're going to get the motor where it belongs we'll get the transmission where it belongs and then we've got a full exhaust system that we're planning on installing which I can't wait to fire this car up and hear what it sounds like and we should hopefully be able to do that in the next video one of the weakest links of these cars from the factory were their brake setups every time a mustang would hit a crowd the owner would never want to blame him or herself for the accident no they blame the brakes and for a good reason this car's nose heavy and it makes a decent amount of power and these just don't cut it. You'll find most of these on the V6 and basic GT models. But on the Boss 302 and Shelby GT500 Mustangs, they came standard with a Brembo four piston brake setup. And they're a really popular upgrade and a direct fit on these cars. The problem is they're Brembos. So when you try and seek out a used set, people want five, six, seven hundred dollars from. But somebody figured out something really interesting. These are a four piston brake setup that are direct fit for the Shelby GT500s, the Boss 302s, and our Mustang GT here. These can be had at a lot of local and online automotive parts stores for $80 a pop. You even look on Rock Auto's website, they have these in powder coated black and standard steel colored, and they still have the Ford and Brembo logos on them. And just look at the size difference between this and the factory brake, all for $80 per caliper. So for 160 bucks in calipers, another 100 in rotors and pads, we're gonna give our Mustang the same exact ones off the ball 302 which will make it less crowd prone and well, just a better car overall i think that these are a necessity especially at the price with our brand new budget big brake kit installed and our remanufactured transmission we're ready for some bolt-on mods like i said we're going to do the long tubes we're going to do some fun stuff under the hood and we're going to focus in on an entire interior refresh remember our front seats are a bit torn up and i found an amazing 200 dollars solution to make things look better than new i can't wait to bring it to you guys so look for that up next make sure you're subscribed to the channel so you get updates when i release new videos on the mustang and i just 
just had the most epic project fall into my lap. I can't talk a lot about it now, but within the next week or so, I plan on rolling some information out on my Instagram. You can follow me right here. Just click the link down in the description. This is going to be one of the craziest things I am given the opportunity to work on. And again, we'll talk about it more soon. Guys, I can't thank each and every one of you enough for watching today, and I'll catch you very soon. Oh,